Now, these are difficult and sensitive issues. Our armed forces have done an absolutely fantastic job, often under very difficult circumstances, but if one sees allegations of abuse, it's important to inquire into them and look at them. And I did that when I was in office. I authorised some court proceedings and some court martials, very unpopular for doing it, but I'm sure it was the right thing to do because there were these isolated incidents. Mm. But that's the point, isolated incidents. Yeah. I mean, the scale of these allegations are vast. It's about 1,000 cases, up to 200 deaths in custody. I, I, I'm very surprised by this. I haven't seen the dossier. I'd be very interested to see it. But I know a lot of the things that are referred to are things which have been dealt with. You're quite right. I did call for further in inquiry, as did other people, but the government responded. The armed forces responded. So we've had inquiries, we've had court cases, we've had uh, judge-led inquiries. Quite a lot of stuff has gone but there's on. Been a lot of overlap, hasn't there, there including has. you know, bits of Chilcot and then there's this historic sure. abuse tribunal as well. I mean, do, do we need an overarching UK-based pub, judge-led public inquiry into well, this? Well, what the government decided to do, and the Ministry of Defence decided to do, was to have a historic abuse team that yeah. would look at cases which required prosecution, because they have got to be dealt with separately, but also look at the rest of it under a judge-led inquiry. It's not straightforward because there are court cases, civil court cases too, and sometimes those have to take precedence and it sort of delays other things taking place. The problem I've got with what I've seen this morning is that in order for the ICC to be involved, two things need to be the case. One is that there needs to be evidence of systematic war crimes, systematic abuse, not just isolated, even if it's a number of examples. And secondly, it has to be the case that the UK is not either willing or, or able to deal with them themselves. That's, that's one of the key things that was put in. Well, let me, the criminal well you, you've set yeah. out the parameters there. Yes. How do you think the International Criminal Court will treat it? It would just be incredibly embarrassing, would it, not for the UK to be up before the ICC? Well, of course it would. I mean, I understand, only understand it really from this report this morning, mm. that the ICC prosecutor or the court has already rejected one request to investigate this. The people who've put this forward I'm sure well-intentioned, but they say they've now got further evidence. I don't know what that is, but I know that in the past the ICC has looked at these things. They know that they shouldn't intervene if a country is capable and willing to do what's necessary itself. And they would also have to satisfy this test of seeing that the systematic abuse, and although I've had concerns, I never saw evidence of systematic uh, abuse. I never saw evidence, for example, that's what surprised me today, that any senior politicians, or even for that matter, or, senior, military figures. or even senior military figures, uh, were aware, let alone authorised this. And I think it's unfortunate that people who are out of office have these sort of headlines against them. So we'll have to see. At the moment, what's happened is that there's a request to the ICC to look at this. We'll have to see how they react to that. But it is possible, isn't it, that, I mean, we, we, we know about the cases that have been discovered, mm. some of those cases that are, that, that, that are subject to proceedings at the moment. I mean, you don't find out about everything that goes on. It's a bit the same way with, with, with investigating That's crime. Right. All, all the criminals that are caught are not all the criminals that exist. It could have been going on, 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 on a larger scale. It, it could have been, although there was quite a lot of in, uh, you know, investigation into this. I mean, take the terrible, terrible Bahamusa case. That came to me when I was in office. Uh, I authorised a prosecution in that case. It, there was a prosecution. It was a court-martial. Uh, there was a conviction. People can argue about whether the, that that was sufficient, but still it was looked at and it was looked at quite hard. Quite a lot was also done to see whether the Royal Military Police needed additional resources so they could look into these quite tricky areas. But you're right, sometimes these things happen without them being seen. This is a case where allegations are being brought forward. They could be put to the historic allegations team. They could be put to the prosecuting authorities in this country to say, will you deal with them? And only if it becomes apparent that they're not willing to, would it perhaps be appropriate then to look at the ICC? Mm, and if it does end up there, well, uh, members of that, that government, senior members of that government could end up there giving, giving evidence. Well, all of this is possible. And when you're in government, you accept you have responsibilities for, for what you do. And uh, those, don't, those don't go away because you've left office. That's absolutely right.